Rabbi Shmuel Liu is a shliach in London, England. Isru Chag Sukkis, the day after Simchas Torah, 1974, Tovshin Lamed Hay. It was a Thursday night. There had been a very exhausting schedule for the Rebbe, obviously the whole Yom Tiv, and especially uh, Simchas Torah, the dancing, and the Fabrengin, and Koshva Brocha. And the next night was Shabbos Bereshis, and there was going to be a Fabrengin as well. And there was Yechidus that night. I went in with my son, Penny. He was five years old. I took him to New York, that Tishrei. Rebbe spoke with the boy. And then he t told me a number of things which I'd like to share. One thing he mentioned to me was I was working at that time with students. It was a year before I became headmaster. And uh, the Rebbe had one month previously instituted a campaign for sh lighting Shabbos candles. And he said, you will meet people who keep nothing whatsoever, uh, students and other such people, you should speak with them and ask them that they should light a candle for Shabbos. The only condition being that they should light it before sunset. And they will listen to the condition, because since the whole reason they're doing it is because I have a favor or out of deference to you, they will do it in the condition that you tell them as well. So you, you don't have to worry about that. Um, the Rebbe then asked me, <coughs> the Rebbe then asked me if I had heard from a certain person, a communal figure, recently. And um, I said, I, it happens to be I did, because I met Rabbi Bernhard from South Africa. At that time, he was not yet a Lubavitcher. I met Rabbi Bernhard. I knew him from South Africa, and um, he told me that he had met this person, and this person had very strongly uh, criticized the Rebbe for his stance on the who is a Jew issue, about the law of return and the whole idea of Jewish identity, and on Soviet Jewry. And um, the Rebbe told me the reason that he says this is because somebody somebody has told him something negative about myself that I criticized him. And the Rebbe said, Ich red nish vegin menchen, ich red vegin shitas. Tell me, I do not speak about personalities, I speak about ideas. And um, it's only because this person had given him the impression that I gave a personal attack on him. I might have spoken against things, you know, in, implicit. In my mind, as the Rebbe is saying this, I said to myself, this man is the Rebbe, the leader of world Jewry, who's total, totally dedicated. Not only that, he's the best friend I have in the world, as a friend, somebody who's totally dedicated to you. And I decided, just it's all within a split second. In that split second, I said to myself, I'm, as soon as I get back to England, I'm going to make an appointment with that communal figure and straighten this all out. As I'm thinking it, the Rebbe says, It's not a good idea that you should tell him that I told you about this. Now, I'm unfortunately a little bit of a wise guy. And in my own mind, the next second, I said to myself, I'll get somebody else. I was desperate like to clear that that person shouldn't have a negative feeling about the Rebbe. And I started thinking, I'll get Rabbi Vogel to go. And as I'm thinking, it's all within a second. The Rebbe says, It's not a good idea. You should ask somebody else to go and, and, uh, and uh, speak to him. Uh, because I'm talking about something which was said at a private conversation. And uh, that's not the point, he said. What the Rebbe said is, but the point is that there are 613 mitzvahs in the Torah. One of them is mi Yehudi. If this person will not work with us on mi Yehudi, let him work together with us on the 612. And for me, that was not just a specific. He, he spoke to me about how to become close to that person and uh, how to befriend him and how positive he was and his family and how they can be forces for good, and let's look for the unifying force. To me, this was a directive in life generally. Look always for that which you have in common with the other person and build that up, 
And through that, you'll be able to achieve your goals rather than having to fight battles. With materials from the Living Archive, established by the Rohr Family Foundation. Video collection preserved by Benjamin Federman in tribute to his parents.